Thanks for coming. My name is Jim Fitzgerald, and I'm the Chief Ambassador for the Historic Republic of the United States of America. And I'm going to introduce our speaker tonight, and his name is Clyde Cleveland. So I'm going to do a brief overview of who your speaker is. Professionally, Clyde is currently the co-founder and president of Randall Marketing Group, a leader in the field of training financial service agents. He has been the founder or co-founder of seven successful companies, including United Investment Groups. In conjunction with UIG, United Investment Groups, Clyde is the general partner of 23 limited partnerships, including real estate, research and development, and wind energy uh, syndications. He developed the first two golf infomercials ever produced. Prior to, prior to the pot to win infomercial, no one thought that a golf club could sell through the mass marketing medium. Concerning freedom and American concerns, Clyde's concern for America and his endeavors in freedom include Libertarian candidate for governor of Iowa in 2002. Clyde also was elected to the Republican State Platform Committee for the state of Iowa in 2008. He co-founded of, uh, in Fairfield, Iowa, a constitutional study group, a successful program dedicated to educating the community on the founding principles of our country. His educational work uh, helped to create a huge victory for Ron Paul in Jefferson County, one of only two counties to be a clear win for Paul over all Republican candidates in the 2008 primary. He was also elected as a delegate to the Continental Congress held in St. Charles, Illinois in 2009. Clyde is also a professional speaker and talks about such things as the full development of human potential, the history of the income tax, and the fraudulent approval of genetically engineered food by the FDA. He has been active in the movement to eliminate the federal income tax for over 18 years. Concerning genetically engineered foods, a few years ago Clyde became very concerned about genetically engineered foods. He felt immediately that taking genes from one species and for forcibly in inserting them into the DNA of a completely different species was a bad idea. The more he researched, it, the more he was convinced that it was extremely dangerous technology. He recently accepted an offer to be on the board of directors of the Institute for Safe Technology, started by Jeffrey Smith, the most recognized speaker and author on GMO foods in the world. Clyde is also an author. More importantly, Clyde has authored two books, Common Sense Revisited, of which you have a copy. You're welcome to take one in the back of the room. Um, if, if For anybody that uh, would like to contribute to donations to pay for this, that would be swell. If not, no worries. Common Sense Revisited, which has sold over 60,000 copies and been read by thousands more as it was given away for free on his website. And they're available, as I said, in the back of the room. Another, his, another book is Restoring the Art of America, A Return to Government by the People. Clyde and his co-host, Todd McGreevy, have a weekly radio show on the Republic Broadcasting Network. The name of the show is Common Sense Revisited. Personal and very important, Clyde and his wife, Debbie, have been married for over 40 years. They have four children and six grandchildren. They lived in Fairfield, Iowa from 1982 to 2009. They are now residents of Florida. Clyde has a bachelor's degree in political science from Indiana University and is a representative for Florida in the Republic for the United States of America. So, your speaker tonight, being no stranger to understanding that there is something terribly wrong in America, is going to talk to you about the Restored Republic for the United States of America and what I believe, and after you hear this presentation, will cause you pause to consider what may well be the solution to what has been stolen from the American people. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Clyde Cleveland. Can everybody hear me okay? Is this mic the way it is right now? Can you all hear me in the back? Yeah. Good. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, there's nothing I love to do more than what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Some of you know, Rebecca is here from Fairfield, Iowa. She knows me. She's seen me do this a hundred times. And uh, this is what I love doing. And uh, I believe, uh, as I think many of you do, that there's something seriously wrong with our country. I felt that a long time ago. And 
because of my work in the securities field and the tax uh, limited partnership field, I became aware of that maybe before a lot of others. And uh, so I've been involved for quite a while now. But boy, things are really, really coming to a head in this country right now. I think all of you know that intuitively, that our country is, is headed for a, um, I guess you could call it a tipping point. And that tipping point could go one of a couple different ways. And uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight is to make sure that it goes the way we need it to go uh, for our children and our grandchildren to grow up in a free, prosperous uh, country uh, that's safe and secure. So uh, with real money, real money. We're going to be talking about money tonight a lot because it's a big, big topic. Uh, so anyway, let's get started. What uh, people tell me that have been to my presentations uh, several times is that it works much better if I go through the talk without interruption and then we take questions and answers. So I think we should follow that if you could. But I love questions and answers. So uh, if you could write down any questions you have uh, that come to your mind, then we'll get to them as soon as we get done. I'll be done in about an hour and we'll have all the time you need for, for questions and answers. So uh, thanks again for coming. I also want to thank Ed Vallejo for uh, helping to promote the event tonight, and all those at Monty and everyone else that worked here in Phoenix to get the word out. So, we're going to be talking about some, we're going to, actually the first half of this presentation is right from the first four or five chapters of my book. And it's about indigenous versus surrogate power, understanding that relationship, uh, understanding bottom-up versus top-down government, and how we can return to what our founders called in the Declaration of Independence, the laws of nature to nature's God. Uh, this is a copy of the book. I wrote this book in 2007. Here's what happened. I turned on the TV one night with my wife in 2007, and there was a Republican debate, and Ron Paul was up there with all these other candidates. It was the very first debate. And I couldn't believe it. I, first of all, I didn't even know he was running. And I've known him for a long time, because he had endorsed my first book in 2002. And, uh, you know, I couldn't believe it. And then here he was just being maligned by the other candidates and maligned by the master of ceremonies and just speaking truth to power and just bringing out truth and knowledge and, and talking the, the principles of freedom and the founders. And I was so inspired. I thought, yeah, gee, he's 72 years old. He's been traveling around the country running for president. My God, if he can do that, the least I can do is right common sense revisited, which has been in my head for years. And so, you know, because I wanted to create something that would create a tipping point, just like Thomas Paine's uh, version of common sense did. By the way, this is the main reason I'm here, folks. This is a picture of my, my wife, my kids, my grandkids. There's no way I want these grandkids, those are the grandsons and these are the granddaughters. There's no way I want these kids to grow up as slaves uh, in a slave society where they're having to pay 80, 90% of what they make just to pay the interest on our debt. That's, that's just not going to happen if there's anything I can say about it. But anyway, let's talk about, first of all, where all this comes from. This is my favorite quote of all the founders. It's uh, Thomas Jefferson. And in 1908, after he'd been running for president for eight years, he was asked at a meeting, uh, what, what was it? How did you guys accomplish what you did You know, with the, with the whole founding of our country? Because by that time, it was you know, 35 years ago that it had happened. And here's what he said. The principles on which we engaged, of which the charter of our independence is a record, were sanctioned by the laws of our being. And we but obeyed them in pursuing undeviatingly the course they called for. It's a very profound statement. In other words, what the founders did is they had a clear understanding of the laws of nature, of divine law, God's law, whatever term you want to give it. And they, they put their attention on being in tune with those principles. And it was because of that that gave them the power to accomplish what they did. Defeat the largest, most powerful military the earth had ever seen up to that point. So um, basically, what, what happened with, with common sense, I will tell you the story because it's amazing. January of 1776, Washington was in Boston, and the militias had come from all over the colonies to fight the British in Boston. This is January 1776. They're already there. They're already fighting the British. And the Continental Congress 
was still debating whether or not to get back with England or whether to declare independence. And it was so bad that Jefferson, Franklin, and Adams were afraid to take a vote in January. So they took a poll. And the poll indicated that 75% of the delegates wanted to get back with England at that time. This is after Lexington and Concord and everything else. So it was bad. They knew that they had a lot of work to do. But what happened that same week is the first 50,000 copies of Common Sense by Thomas Paine were released. And they sold out in a few days. And another 50,000 copies were released. And they sold out in a few days. And on and on. And pretty soon, Common Sense had swept the country. And what he did, what Paine did, is he explained the difference between indigenous and surrogate power, which is what we're going to talk about. He explained that the individual human being was sovereign and that the government was the servant. In other words, the individual was the master and the, the king and the queen, they were a, it represented the government, they were the servants. And he explained it so clearly and with so, such common sense that the people got it. It created a tipping point. And uh, George Washington said in, in April, by private letters which I have lately received from Virginia, I find common sense is working a powerful change there in the minds of many men. So the founders of, and the Continental Congress were aware that things were shifting. And it shifted so much in such a short period of time that by July 2nd, they were able to get a unanimous vote for independence. And on July 4th, they signed it. So there was a shift that occurred in the country. People always ask me, how long is this going to take to restore our founding documents and our founding principles? Well, it could take a long time or it could happen very quick. But we have the ability to create a paradigm shift in this country. And now is the time because people are finally starting to wake up. So anyway, by, the, by when it was all over, oh, almost 500,000 copies of Common Sense had been sold in a country of less than 3 million people. It really did create, help to create a paradigm shift. And that's why I wrote this book. I was, that's, this is my attempt to create that shift. And it's very interesting. I wrote it in 2007, and I didn't realize it at the time. But I wrote it for right now. I wrote it for this movement to restore our republic. Uh, when you see how it all fits together with what I wrote then, it's obvious I wrote it now. And we sold a lot of copies. I mean, for a political book, we probably 100,000 people have read this, which is a lot for a political book. But you know how many we're selling now? 2,000 a day. Thank you. Thank you. So, and I lowered all the prices, so it's basically my cost. It's uh, by the time you figure out all my costs, it's a dollar a cost, dollar a copy. You all, just go to our website, commonsenserevisited.com, and you can order as many copies as you want for a dollar. If you get up to 150 copies, it drops to 75 cents. And so what a lot of people are doing is they're joining together. One uh, guy in Minnesota just ordered 600 copies. So that's why I printed it, by the way, as a magazine. It costs a lot less to print a book as a magazine style like this than it does a regular book. So anyway, let's talk a little bit more about this indigenous power concept, because this is absolutely vital. First of all, the founders saw these truths as self-evident. That common sense concludes that any rational thinking being is unique because they have free will and the ability to manifest thoughts into concrete forms through action. Our Creator gave us this unique ability uh, to create, to be creators in the image of God. Just like God's a creator, we are like in that image. We can create and manifest thoughts into action. It's the only true source of power on the planet is the individual. Because this power originates within, it's called indigenous. Indigenous power. And this was very clear to the colonists at that time. It wasn't just Thomas Paine, it was John Locke, in the second treatise on government. It was jo uh, uh, Joseph Mayhew uh, in 1750 gave a very famous sermon uh, that John Adams said started the revolution in 1750. They understood indigenous power, and that's what we have to understand, and we have to share that with our friends, because we have the power. The only other kind of power on the planet is power that we loan to entities that we create. 